Continuing with our news now special, focusing on the leaders of the provincial parties contesting the Ontario election, I am joined now by Jack Plant, the leader of the Freedom Party in Ontario. Welcome, Mr. Plant. Well, thanks, George. A number of issues have been identified by the various parties running in this election as being key issues in the province at this time. What, from the Freedom Party's point of view, do you think is the key issue for the voters? Well, it seems to be right now that I think everybody is zeroing in on the deficit, although that may not be the key issue for us as a party. I think that the voters and the other parties are really keying in on that issue. Uh, what would be the key issue, do you think, for your party? Well, for us, uh, a big issue is the vote itself. Uh, we proposed a plan uh, called uh, the STV, it's the Single Transferable Vote, which would bring about more proportional representation in the province and in the country when you have an election. It's a little different than the first past the post, what we have now. For example, the Conservatives won uh, many, many votes in the federal election, yet only ended up with two seats that kind of thing. Uh, Reform Party in the last federal election got uh, a huge amount of votes and yet didn't end up with any seats at all and the, the single transferable vote is one method that would redistribute that vote so there would be a better uh, representation we believe. Uh, without that happening, uh, do you think there are chances of gaining power so you can bring about this change? Um, well, possibly not. Uh, I don't think there's any chance that a Freedom Party candidate will be elected this election. Uh, we're looking forward to possibly uh, another election if there's a minority government in 18 months or if there's another election in five years. We possibly may be able to get a candidate elected then or the election after that. When we started the party in 1984, we realized realistically that it would probably take about 20 years to be a credible political party with a chance of having anybody elected. Uh, a major part, uh, a major uh, point rather in your party's platform is a call for a Taxpayer Protection Act. What would that involve? Well, it would involve uh, a flat tax rate, uh, a binding referendum on tax increases, um, a ceiling to which taxes could be raised, things like that. Um, you, like some of the other parties, are calling for a reduction in personal income taxes. What kind of a cut are you calling for? We're not uh, stating a specific position on that, um, but the integrity of our party has shown over the last 11 years that that's the direction we want to go. To peg a number on the decreases is, is fairly unrealistic because I believe that any party that gets in, if the Conservatives win the election and they're promising a 30% decrease, I think you'll find that after a couple of months when they're in there, they'll have the same old story that they got in and they found out that the books were in much worse shape than they thought they were and that they were going to have to delay some of their plans, that they're unrealistic. So we're not setting any targets because you can't realistically do that until you know the numbers. But we have always had the uh, platform plank that we are for reducing taxes uh, to stimulate the economy. All right. In the area of social assistance, the Freedom Party stand indicates social assistance will be directed only to those in demonstrable need. And what exactly is meant by demonstrable need? Uh, well, again, that's something that would have to be decided, uh, maybe by a parliamentary committee. Um, for example, when Medicare was brought in in uh, the late 60s, uh, approximately at that time, 82% of the people in Canada had uh, uh, adequate uh, health insurance. So the government, in their wisdom, instead of directing uh, uh, help to those people who could not afford medical care created a whole government industry and a great big bloated bureaucracy and we've seen the results of it today health care costs are out of control and uh, to direct the help to people in need uh, we could start with user fees on medical care and uh, again the poor are a different issue most of the politicians today are touting universality but universality uh, gives everybody free medical care and it doesn't direct the help to the poor where it's really needed. Do you think Ontario citizens are going to have to face user fees, particularly in the area of medicine, in the immediate future? Oh, absolutely. There's already user fees now. The only place where there isn't user fees really is on the physician himself, on the doctor. But if you go um, to many things, uh, I remember when my daughter had a broken wrist here a couple of years ago, you have to go, you have to pay for the cast. There are many services that uh, have to be paid for. Uh, the NDP is touting uh, that they're going to uh, keep Medicare uh, as solid as it is now, but yet they've cut back the snowbird, snowbirds uh, coverage. 
they've cut back all kinds of coverage on certain uh, elective uh, surgeries and things like that. So um, user fees are one way to go. It's a first step, I think, and uh, it's inevitable. And like I say, they're already in place now, actually. Mm -hmm. Your party, Mr. Plant, also calls for the elimination of employment equity laws under Bill uh, 79, the labor legislation under Bill 40, uh, Bill 8, the French Services Act, and the Ontario Human Rights Commission. I, I suppose last first, why would you do away with the Ontario Human Rights Commission? Well, the Human Rights Commission has uh, shown itself to have a very racist uh, and sexist agenda. Um, the complaints basically only deal with women or people of ethnic origin, disabled people and the like of that. Uh, I know when the firefighter in Kitchener that was the big story in the news tried to bring his case of being discriminated against to the Human Rights Commission, they wouldn't even hear the case. It's a wasteful process, it's divisive. I was involved uh, here in London with uh, Robert Metz, the president of the party, uh, defending Elijah Eliev before the Human Rights Commission. And I would love to see the bill on that uh, for something that was so moot as the, the point that he was charged with. A completely wasteful process and uh, divisive in the community too. People see uh, people in these groups getting what they consider to be a, a, an extra helping hand. They uh, believe that these people have more rights than they do and uh, it's creating a lot of ill feeling in the community and it's actually creating racism. And uh, I believe in the area of education, if I can very quickly, you think taxpayers should be able to direct their taxes to the school of their choice? Yes, I think this would be wonderful. Uh, it's something that's been coming for a long time. I see the Family Coalition Party believes that too and I see more and more people all the time uh, getting on and, and understanding the idea of what it's all about because a lot of people are uh, very tired uh, to, to say honestly about the public education system. I think it's a total failure and it's getting worse by the hour. And if many people would like to homeschool their, their children but they don't get the money back from the government uh, for the books uh, or they would like to send them to a private school but in that case they're paying twice and they're being penalized. It's a system that we're forced to participate in, even if we want to or not, and people are really getting fed up with that. All right, thank you very much, Mr. Plant. You're welcome, thank you. We would like to thank all three of this evening's leaders from the Green Party, the Family Coalition Party, and the Freedom Party for joining us in our News Now Leader interviews. A reminder to join us Thursday night at 8 o'clock for up-to-the-minute results and live reports from across this region and across Ontario in Election 95. I'm George Clark. Thank you for joining us. This has been a News Now special presentation.